Nursery has ordered new crib mattresses. They'll be coming in when they're special made, so I'm not sure how long it's going to take them to get made and get shipped. Um, and we ordered sheets for them, new sheets for them. So that'll be good because those, those, it must not be very expensive to start with. So um, the heat messed them up. And so we got new ones being made. Hallelujah. Um, think of anything else before we move forward? Oh, we're announcing anybody that wants to be available to help on the 18th. That's a Friday night, the 18th, here at the church. We are hosting our um, um, RMAI ministers meeting. Um, I am the district director, and so we're hosting our ministers. And um, so we will have, uh, right now we've got about 15 people coming, we, but, you know, we could, that could shoot up to 30, as many as 30. So, but we were asking people who could come over and help serve and take care of the kitchen. Um, I need I need some people to come early because Janie and I have to work, but we need to get the food in the oven heating up because we're going to cook it the day before. Um, we'll we'll cook it on uh, Thursday night, have it ready, <clears throat> and um, or cook it Wednesday and have it ready and bring it and put it in the refrigerator on Thursday, and then come in on Friday and get in the oven and start heating it up. So there won't be really any cooking for anybody to do other than the heating stuff up. And um, next Wednesday night after church, we're gonna we're gonna um, Stack the chairs and set up tables. Joy, joy, joy. Okay? We got, we got to set it up for a meeting, you know, and it's just a dinner meeting, so the chairs have to be stacked, and then we have to, um, we don't have a room that we can put everybody in. We don't have one that big. Um, in our other building, we could have taken over and set up the meal in one place and moved, but then they told us at Raymond, don't do that. Uh, when Doug was here one time, he said, don't, don't, don't move. He said, it, it breaks something, so... It breaks the fellowship, breaks the communication that's going on to get up and move to the other room. So what we'll do is next Wednesday night after church, we'll ask everybody to stack the chairs, and then we'll get them all set up with the tables um, for the Raymond meeting for Friday night, <clears throat> which means that on that Saturday when these people come back out and help us set up chairs back up. Okay? So I have these twice a year. I, I'm supposed to have two of these meetings twice a year, um, or two of these meetings. I'm supposed to have these meetings twice a year. If you're, so if you're available, let me know, and uh, we'll kind of get it scheduled. That's next Friday, one week from uh, this Friday, okay? Praise the Lord. All right. Um, let's go ahead. Let's share, let's share the uh, service and um, get going. Hallelujah. Make sure you share it with your, your app, with your uh, Facebook, and uh, get it out there so people can tune in. And then Hallelujah. We will go. Father, we thank you for our time together. Thank you for the bread of life, which we break tonight. And we thank you, dear God, that as we uh, continue studying the Bible in the light of our redemption, that understanding and wisdom and revelation and, uh, comes to us in regards and in relationship to um, our new life in you through redemption. In Jesus' name, amen. Anybody, anybody say Amen. Hallelujah. So we talked about last, about last week be, um, the uh, identify, identify with Christ, being in him. Last Wednesday night, the name of Jesus, our authority. Remember, after we were identified with Christ in his resurrection, we became new creatures in Christ. He then granted unto us a tool in which we could exercise our authority, our rightful authority as believers. And for us, it's the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, that's for anybody. If you, if you, the only name that has power is the name of Jesus. I've given unto the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, every tongue confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father of things in heaven and things on the earth and things beneath the earth. In other words, the name of Jesus has authority in heaven, earth, and hell. Amen? Well, then, uh, because of the fall of man, now understand that man walked in relationship and fellowship with God before the fall. 
He knew who, who knew who he knew who God was. They communed, all right. But after the fall, the light went out, and it continued to grow. And you know, and, and gross darkness would cover their minds, and their minds were blinded, and uh, they had been born again, born from life unto death. Satan had become their spiritual father. Jesus clearly said, in John eight. Uh, 44, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will fulfill. So when Adam fell in the garden, man was born again. But, you know, not, not born unto God, but born from life unto death. Spiritual death overtook him. Darkness, his mind became, began to be renewed to the spirit of darkness. And his body began to decay. Okay. So the nature of Satan began to affect his physical body where physical diseases and sickness began to overtake and, and pervert. And man began to age. And he would, you know, as, as God said, dying you shall die. Okay? So, this now, Jesus came to reverse the curse, to undo. Hallelujah. But because of the fall of man, because of the darkness of his mind, be even when his spirit gets born again, Paul writes to the church and says, uh, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Greek word is metamorpho there. Transformed is metamorpho, where we get our English word metamorphosis. Your mind has a metamorphosis. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're sci-fi savvy and you like Star Trek, you'll remember the Borg. You know, they assimilate you. They make you part of their collective. The word of God assimilates your mind. You know, the Bible says receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save. Now, the word save there is sozo, but it's not referring to salvation in the sense that it gets born again. It's, it actually means there to make whole or to make sound, to save or to make sound your suke, your soul, the mind, the will, the intellect, the emotions of man are seated in the soul, the suke of man. And so... Um, Man, because of the darkness, because of the lost fellowship with God for so long, and for so, and so many ideas about who God is and what God does, and you know, uh, so forth, have been introduced by Satan, obviously, um, to, to mankind. When got, man got born again, his spirit was alive into God. He didn't know God. He didn't understand God with his mind. God had to create a way whereby he could reveal who he is to man. Now, under the old covenant, he would reveal it through actions. Okay? Uh, he, he'd make mountains burn, and they, you know, or bushes burn, but not burn up. Okay? The, you know, the plagues came. Um, you know, he, he, different things were done, him trying to reveal himself. And, and then, as, as uh, um, Schofield says in his study notes, on the name of Jehovah, or better, the Y-H-W-H, it's, it's not pronounceable. We pronounce it Jehovah or Yahweh um, based on which, which school of thought, the dramatic line of languages, you know, which they've used the J instead of the Y, and they took put vowels in and became Jehovah. And then the other, other line where they put vowels in the Y-H-W-H and, you know, and became Yahweh. But it's still that, but they, I forgot they call it some, some kind of gram. Um, it's, but it's a four-letter something gram, all right? Uh, it's unpronounceable. You, cannot, you can't pronounce it. So we had to put vowels in to try to pronounce it. Now, it was pronounceable at one time. But the Jews, when they uh, translated Scripture, when they got to that word, they would not read it out loud. As a matter of fact, before they would transcribe it, when they got to it, they would get up, they would go and cleanse themselves and wash themselves ceremonially so come out, they could come, come out and write that one word. Because it was so holy, they couldn't write it unclean. Okay? That, I mean, that's, that's, and so, and they, they felt so whatever that, that, that their, their sinful lips to speak it would have been blasphemous, and so they wouldn't say it. So they forgot how to pronounce it. And that's, that, that's where the pronunciation got lost. And... Um, so it's kind of interesting, isn't it? You know, they, they would actually get up and cleanse themselves so they could transcribe that one word. So make sure they were pure before God, but before they took his holy name and did that. And so, you know, over time, I, light was lost. Now, the psalmist said, the entrance of that word giveth light, it give understanding to the simple. So God had to give man a means whereby he could Come to know him 
once again. And so he did it through his word. Now, throughout the old covenant, he kept revealing himself, but their minds were darkened and their spirits were darkened. And so they were, in, 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 for all practical intents and purposes, unable to receive the revelation of who God was. I mean, so much so that when Jesus shows up and they got all the prophecy and everything about him is right there staring right in the face, they missed him. Here's God manifest in the flesh, doing all the things that God would do, but they had so institutionalized who God was in their minds, okay, that when Jesus showed up and said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, they couldn't see him. And so God gave us New Testament the revelation, theology, the writings of the, of, of the scriptures. Now, why do you call it New Testament scriptures? Peter did. Remember, Peter said this. He said, in, in reference to Paul, he said, who has many things um, that are hard to understand, which they which are unlearned do rest the scriptures, W-R-E-S-T, twist, the scriptures, as they also do the others. So he called Paul's writing scripture. Think about it. <laughs> There's Peter, you know, um, at that time, basically the chief apostle of the apostles, calling Paul's writing scripture. All right? And so, the, the, you know, the New Testament is, is that scripture. And when we love to refer to the Pauline revelation of what Paul wrote in his writings to the churches, as that revelation in, in who we are in Christ, it is the re revelation of redemption. Now, other writers wrote about being saved, about walking in love, it's Paul who gave us the revelation of who we are in Christ. So God, God gave us a means whereby we can understand him and have revelation give us to him, us about him, instead of leaving it up to the guys with a bunch of letters behind their names. I got letters behind my name too, okay? I got B-A, M-A, D-D, Okay? Like one guy, Bill Shambot used to say, uh, um, he's, I got my, I got my B.A. and my D.D., <clears throat> my born again and my devil destroyer. <laughs> oh, well, if you ever heard Brother Shambot preach, you know, <laughs> hallelujah. And so God gave his word. There's a battle about the word of God, always raging. Even from the very, very beginning, remember when the serpent came to Eve in the garden and began to try to tempt her, and she said, no, the, Bible, the God said for us not to eat of, of, uh, of, the, of the trees of the garden, uh, you know, we can eat of all the trees of the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And Satan said to her, half God said that? Because we'll surely die. Half he said that? Because he knows that in the day you eat of it, you'll be as God's doing both good and evil. He challenged the very word of God in the very beginning. And he's challenged it ever since. And we get help from people who went to theological cemeteries. And I didn't misquote. I, mis I didn't misspoke. I, I deliberately said theological cemeteries. Because you got a lot of people who went to cemetery and came out dead instead of full of life because people took all the faith out of them. All right. <clears throat> God gave his word as his revelation to man. So the imperativeness and the diligence of the word of God in our lives and using the word of God and spend the time in the word of God and allow it to affect our lives is, is uh, exceedingly necessary in your life, because that's how God reveals himself. See, some people think if, if Jesus walked in here right now and stood and you saw his glory or whatever, um, that would do it for you. But you know, the Bible warns you in the New Testament to be aware because you've entertained angels unaware. And then, then, then it does this. It even goes on and says this about the devil. It says he could appear, appear or manifest as an angel of light. The devil knows how to say my son. 
You know, just because you heard, heard something, my son, and you got goosebumps. They might be uh, uh, frightful chill thrill bumps and not Holy Ghost chill bumps. The devil can say or manifest, the devil can manifest as an angel of light. So we, we have to have something. Um, let, let's look over into, I believe, Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 1, and we'll look down here at verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Now what Peter is referring to here is the transfiguration in the mount. Okay? We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. All right? For he received from God, the Father, honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. So this is Peter recounting the Mount of Transfiguration. We're hearing James and John right there with Jesus. And Peter opens his mouth once again. Let's build a tent, you know, <laughs> let's build a tent for you, one for Elijah, one for Moses. Let's just hang out up here. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> you know, I feel like he probably got some Batman slaps, Batman and Robin slaps. <laughs> you seen those cartoons where Batman slapping Robin for being stupid? <laughs> you just got to think, Jesus had to at least once or twice want to slap Peter. Okay? Now listen to this. Now, have you read, have you heard me? Peter's in the mount. They heard God speak. They saw him transfigured. They heard God say, this is my son in whom I'm well uh, pleased. Verse 19. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Now, he didn't say that the, that, that the, word, the word God spoke in that, in that mount wasn't a sure word. He said, we got one that's more sure. In other words, there is a higher realm of authority in the realm of prophecy than, hear, than seeing a vision. Whereunto you do well that ye take heed as a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Peter's saying that the written word carries a higher authority than an audible word. And he even said it was a higher authority than what he saw on the mount. <laughs> and all I can say when you think is, wow. Because we run around thinking, man, if I'd been in the mount, I'd have believed everything. Peter said the word's more sure than that. Amen. I said, Peter said that the word is more sure than what they saw in the mount. Now that messes with people. Why? The reason they want to see things or hear things or have visions and, and, and spectacular is because their flesh ruled. Their mind, their, their, you know, they, they want to I'm not going to believe unless I see it. That's really what's going on. They can't accept it because the word says so. Hello. And they'll reject it because of experiences, although the word speaks contrary to their experiences, they'll still reject the written word because their experience speaks to them louder. Well, God don't heal. It's not God's will to save everybody. How, how do you know? I knew so and so. They didn't get saved. That don't mean it wasn't his will. See, the word says he's not willing that any should perish. Well, they didn't get saved. Why, why did they get saved? Because they didn't receive. Had nothing to do with his will. 
Well, it's not God's will to heal everybody. Why? I know so-and-so, and they're the best Christian I ever met in my life. And I'm telling you, ain't nobody loved the Lord as much as that person. And if God didn't heal them, to heal them, then it wasn't his will to heal them. Hello? Y'all hear? Really? So, you, you, you know, Psalm 1 and 3 says, who healeth all thy diseases. Well, I can't help that. that you know, it wasn't God's will. Why? Because he didn't get healed. So now what you see in the natural carries more authority than what the scriptures say. And Peter says, we saw. The written word is. Amen. Y'all hear you gone home. So we are encountering a resistance to the word of God. Uh, one, one reason is the unrenewed mind. You don't let your mind get renewed because your experiences, your flesh, your circumstances, your senses tell you something different. And we deal with this um, a lot with healing. Why? They can feel the pain. They can see the growth. They can see the doctor's report. And God even had a scripture for that one. Whose report will you believe? You're going to believe Dr. So-and-so? You're going to believe Dr. Jesus? Amen. But see, your body says you're sick. The doctor says you're sick. The word of God says you're healed. Well, I don't know what doctor. Lord, if it be your will, he, well, he's already told you what his will is. He's already told you in his word. By his stripes ye were healed. So God works through his word. It is the word of God through which God primarily reveals himself. I'm not going to say he doesn't reveal himself other ways, but he primarily far above any other method or way, reveals itself through his word. Why? It's the more sure word of prophecy. I remember um, years ago, Brother Copeland was talking about how he had um, read Brother Hagen's book, I Believe in Visions. <laughs> Good book. Talks about all the visions, the major, those eight major visions running up through uh, sometime in 19, the late 50s. <clears throat> I mean, the Roswell vision, the, I mean, different ones where he's called up into heaven and different things, Jesus appearing to him. And Brother Copeland got to pray. And he tried to crowbar God. Lord, you're not a respecter of person. He said, he'd be putting scripture on God. Yeah, the devil tried that. didn't work. Lord, you're not a respecter of person. He said he prayed and he prayed and fasted. And he said, God, I want Jesus to appear to me. And after, after a long while, finally, the Brother Copeland said, the Lord spoke to him one night and said, okay, Kenneth, I'll appear to you. He said, but it'll set your ministry back five years. As a matter of fact, you may never recover. Why? Because he was depending on seeing a manifestation to follow God down certain paths. Well, what about Brother? Brother Hagin didn't ask for him to appear to him. Hello? He knew he could be trusted with it. Well, he's not, no, he's not a respected person, but he understands who we are. And there are people that Jesus appeared, and I've, I've met people who said that they saw this, and they saw, you know, one guy, when we first came to Greensboro, had his testimony that he saw uh, Jesus. And this guy was, uh, um, he was the mold for the Fruit Loop factory. Okay, the cereal. He was the mold. And uh, somebody finally came to, to me and said, listen, the pastor, he said, now he tells the story about seeing Jesus. He said, but it used to be, he said he saw an angel. But then so-and-so and the other, the, um, the color dye um, portion of the Fruit Loop factory was this guy. Okay. Told him, you didn't have to see an angel, you saw Jesus. And he changed it to seeing Jesus. Let me tell you, if you saw Jesus, you know you saw Jesus. You don't need 
the other guy that could do color, color commentary and tell you that you, you, you didn't see an angel, you saw Jesus. Amen. I say amen. You don't wonder if you saw Jesus or not. Dear Lord, how come I got off on that? There are some crazies out there. And I don't know why they run around the charismatic church so much. I find this, I, that's where all the granola Christians are, fruits, nuts, and flakes all put together in the same box. There are some loony tunes out there. But Jerry Savelle said it real good, a long time ago. He said, let's face it, folks, there are squirrels in the camp. <laughs> there are. I mean, you know, you'll see them. And they're, they're just as weird and flaky as, I mean, 10-year uh, bad dandruff. Oh, my. And I'm just warming up. I've done gone to meddling. All right. Um, so Peter says that, we not, that, 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 all, that the Scripture is a higher authority called Paul's writings of uh, Scripture. Satan battles the Word. Why? Because if you can't get the Word in you, you can't renew your mind. And you'll know God by what people think they think about God. And that's what we're talking about. What their experience tells them is what they begin to formulate about who God is. Hello? Uh, uh, to, to eventually in 1611 to the first King James. Y'all do know the King James you use today is not the 1611 one? You can't read it. It's hard to read. Because of the, the because of the spelling, even of that of that Elizabethan English, and the uh, construct, it's still it's, it's still hard for us to read it. Now, Wycliffe is really hard. That was about a hundred years or so early. It's really hard to read. I mean, you got to look at that. You're going, you're, you're doing phonetical, trying to get it. That's how hard it is to read. But that's that was that was their language at the time. Um, you know, but again, King Jimmy was uh, modified again two or three times. And so the, model, the one we have now is not the 1611. Now, I know people wear their baseball hats. 1611 KJV for me. And like that woman told Brother Hagen one time, because he said, now the Greek says this and the Greek says that. And she came up to him after the church service and said, I want to tell you one thing, Brother Hagen. If the King James was good enough for the Apostle Paul, it's good enough for me. <laughs> and what do you say? <laughs> What do you say when they do that? <laughs> Brother Hagin would say, I'd rather hear a donkey bray in a tin barn at midnight and hear such foolishness as that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So, we, we need the word of God for revelation. Satan fights against it. Came through the Reformation. Uh, Luther writes his thesis. Nails it to the church, and then the Bible becomes, becomes, starts becoming more and more readily available to the people to read for themselves. Hallelujah. Then, so we, we go through that, and now everybody gets so, many, so much of the Bible, and gets so much of the Bible that they, they get to the point where they believe it. That's the Bible. But they don't act on it. So we go from one ditch to another. <clears throat> if we go from one ditch of not being able to get the revelation or read the Bible to the other ditch that it's so available and we've heard it so much that we mentally assent to it. Simply meaning we just kind of go, yep, that's the Bible, I believe it. And never act on it. So that's mental assent. You mentally say, yeah, that's the word of God. Yeah. I believe it from Genesis to Revelation and every page in between. But you never act on it. So you've assented <clears throat> through a soulish acknowledgement. You say it's truth, yet you don't let it govern your life. That's not faith. And that's not revelation. It's assent. It's a mental exercise. You see, faith comes out of the heart. Amen? Faith comes by hearing the word. Amen? Faith cometh by hearing the word. Amen? Amen? 
Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I, I, I totally got like, what, what's the rest of that scripture? I got it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, it, it's a, it, it will affect your soul, but it produces faith in your spirit. It renews your mind and produces faith in your spirit. If you don't have the word of God and allow it to affect you like that, if you just simply go, oh yeah, that's the Bible. How many times have people heard John 3, 16 in their life and never acted on it? Some people, thousands. If you went to a Baptist church, hundreds of thousands. That's no joke. Now, if one thing a Baptist is going to do, they're going to, they're going to tell you, you must be born again. More than once. They'll preach it. I mean, they will preach it. They'll go outside and get the cow saved. And I'm glad. You know, we should be, we should be just as uh, fervent in, in our charismatic Pentecostal churches, getting people saved. All right? Um, but we begin to become so familiar with the Bible that it loses its authority because we're so familiar with it. Mental assent says the word is true, but it does not act on it. Faith says, I believe it, and this is how I live. Not just I believe it, I act on it. Wigglesworth, <coughs> Smith Wigglesworth, <coughs> referred to historically as the um, great apostle of faith. And Brother Wigglesworth, uh, they, they said they, that um, history shows that he raised the dead 26 times in his ministry. Now, in his, in his own writings, he refers to three of those events. Uh, one man who did a, a, a biography on him who knew him said he raised the dead 26 times. He'd stand people up against the wall and say, walk in Jesus' name. He'd pick them back up. <laughs> you know, everybody's out there going, you know, they're all upset because he's messed up the funeral. He really messed it up when they walked into the parlor. Hello. But uh, he would stand on the platform with the crowds of people out there and just say over and over again, faith is an act. Faith is an act. In other words, if there's, what, what, did, what did the writer say? He said, faith without works is, James, faith without works is dead being alone. Well, he, James and Paul had a big disagreement. Hello? Well, No. When Paul writes about works, he's talking about keeping the Mosaic law. Go study it. It's, it's not that hard to figure it out. If you, write, you read his writings and see when he refers to the works of the law, he's referring to keeping the Mosaic law in order to achieve righteousness or anything from God. James, on the other hand, is talking about actions that correspond to your faith. He's not talking about getting saved because you had an act. Show me that faith without thy works. I show you by faith by my works, James said. He's talking about, and we refer to it this way, and some translations will even put it this way, um, faith without corresponding action. Okay? So the, the works, the word works that James uses, or in the t way he uses it, is not in reference to the, the, the Levitical law. Paul, on the other hand, when he refers to works, is referring to the Levitical law. Now, you know, righteousness without the law is now manifest. In other words, I don't have to not walk two miles on Sunday. Okay? If I did, you know, on the Old Covenant, if I walked, you know, two whatevers, I'd broken the law. If I cooked on Sunday, dear Lord, well, I don't cook. <laughs> I go to Parker's Barbecue. Okay, so you're not going to sin by cooking, but you're going to make all them folk in that kitchen sin for cooking for you. Listen, I heard it all growing up because, you know, Pentecostal is something else sometimes. You know? Young ass. You're not working. You're washing the car. Well, I need to be able to see. Windshield's three inches deep in mud. I got to be able to. No, you can't, well, you can't do it because Grandma's coming. And hide them playing cards. Grandma said, you'll, she'll, you'll be going to hell. 
You'll be the object next Sunday's preaching service. See, we got caught up in the works of the law and missed the whole thing about actions that correspond to our faith, that our faith will produce certain kinds of actions. Amen. Well, what does, what, where does that faith come from? Now, Brother Hagin used to say it, and F.F. Bosworth is, is, uh, said it. Faith begins where the will of God's known. Okay. That's why you had people tell me all the time they didn't read their Bible. How did they tell you that? Lord, if it be thy will, heal me. Whoa, 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 stop. God's already told you in his word what his will is. What you just said is you hadn't read the Bible. Because if you read the Bible, you would know if it's his will or not to heal. Amen. So you can't pray in faith because you don't know the will of God. So you're not in faith. Can't be. Because you don't know his will. If you read the Bible, you can't, you can't come back and say, uh, Lord, heal me if it be thy will. You'd have to be going, now, Lord, your word says that by the stripes of Jesus I was healed. Your word says that you heal all my diseases. Amen. Your word says that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be sozo. And one of, the, one, of the, one of the definitions or translations of sozo is to be made whole and healed. So if you can't, if you can't, if you go, if it be thy will heal me, you just told me you hadn't read the Bible. Why? The Bible is God's revelation of who he is to you, what he wants for you to have, and who you are in him. And Satan fights that every step of the way because he does not want you to find out anything about who you are, the authority you have, what belongs to you, the privileges and rights you have in Christ. He wants to keep you out of that word. Can I get an amen? amen? Hallelujah. We have to learn to confess the word and not the circumstance. All right. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if we can answer the questions because I didn't even use the notes in here. I hope y'all read it because I, I, I color commentaried it. What has God made known to us in his revelation which he has given us? He's given us a revelation of himself, of our redemption in Christ, of the new creature in Christ. This revelation is not only a witness of himself, but also a witness of the new creation, his privileges, authority, and responsibility. See, that's how we know. That's how we know. Not, be, not because somebody said, well, you're a new creature. No, the scripture says you're a new creature. Or somebody says, man, I feel like a brand new person this morning. And by nightfall, they can feel like you know, death warned over three times. Your feelings can't, are, not, are not your guide. And your theological know-it-all buddy ain't your guide. Because you got people who think they know everything. Oh, yeah. They think they know everything. And that... They, they know everything there is about the Bible. No, nobody does. Not walking around down here. We're still learning. We're still growing. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. He can correct us when we miss it and get off. What place does the word hold <coughs> in the new birth and the life of God's child? Every child is begotten of the word. Remember? Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. When then... The Word of God doesn't get you born again again. The Word of God becomes your daily food. It becomes your spiritual nourishment. Amen? And it's the maintainer of your spiritual life. When Satan found that Marta, oh, okay, we didn't cover this. Um, during the Dark Ages, they would begin to martyr Christians to try to, you know, so forth and so on. And but when he found out that he couldn't keep the church from that growth that way, what well, other means did he, he apply, um, employ? He began attacking the word itself so that it was powerless and ineffective in the life of man. Why was God seemingly inactive during the Middle Ages? We all know that. it was locked away in monasteries, translated in a language that common people could not understand. 
thus causing God's word to lose its place in the lives of men. We, how many have you ever heard the statement, absence makes the heart grow fonder? Yeah. How many know that's not true? People begin to wane in absence. Hello? That, that's some Hollywood thing, but really in, the light, in real life, stay away from something long enough and you'll lose a taste for it. I mean, you might like going to Dario every week and getting ice cream. See, it's only eight miles from here. Right out there, 62 down. Okay. Soft shirt swirl. Stay away from it long enough. You go get it. You go, oh, that's too sweet. We stay away from the word of God long enough, and it'll lose its force and place in our life. What brought about the Reformation? It came because a few men began to have the Word of God work in their lives, and then they gave it to the common people. The spread of Bibles into the homes of the common people cannot be separated from the Reformation. Getting the Word into their homes, the printing press, and made ways of printing the Bible in, that, in language that people could read was major. What caused the church to be hindered after the Reformation? Satan calls men to build creeds and doctrines. In other words, our church believes this. And they encamped around of it. I mean, they, you know, if it was outside of that, you walk in churches right now in, in this country and say, I believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, and they'll throw you out. There's a Bible school down in Pensacola, Florida. And they actually have on their website, if you speak in tongues, don't bother applying. Did they not read what Paul said, forbid no man to speak in tongues? Now, I've got scripture for mine. You ain't got it for yours, honey. But their creed supersedes the Bible. Hello? They, their creed is that the, that the gifts of the Spirit are not for the church today. How do you come up with that? And it's convoluted. It is a convoluted series of Put stuff together to say that the, 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 the gifts of the Spirit are not available to the church today. Yet the Bible straightly, clearly, flat out says, forbid no man to speak with tongues. And they don't have an answer for it. Other than their creed. So creeds and doctrines crept into the church and began to separate and isolate people based on that set of beliefs that you couldn't penetrate and you couldn't enter in if you didn't wholly align with them. Now, I am a post-trib believer. <clears throat> but if you're a pre-trib believer, I will not have a falling out with you. If you're a mid-trib believer, I will not have a falling out with you. I don't believe it's a, it's a core belief one way or the other as to whether or not you're going to heaven. I don't think, I don't, if you believe, listen, here's the thing. When the rapture takes place, we'll all know. Well, no, if it was pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib. Did I say I was post-trib? I'm a pre-trib believer. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm pre-trib. I believe we're going up before the, before the, the uh, tribulation starts. I, I got that mixed up. <laughs> we're going through the tribulation. <coughs> I'm sorry. I, I misspoke. I pre-trib. I don't believe we're mid-trip, you know. But you got all three of those are camps in the body of Christ. And some don't even believe in the trip. They're non-trip. Pre-trip, mid-trip, post-trip, non-trip. Well, let's say it like this. If Jesus comes back and catches the saints away, if you're born again, you're going up. And I'll guarantee there ain't one of them who's a post-trip, if it's going up pre-trip, going to be going, no, no, put me back. I got to wait seven more years. It ain't going to happen. <coughs> Amen. All right. Um, <coughs> excuse me. What method is Satan using today to keep the word from prevailing in our lives? Mental ascent. One of the biggest dangers to the church today. Brother Hagen used to say, he said, 
one of the, he said, the greatest need of the body of Christ today is minds renewed to the Word of God. Minds renewed to the Word of God. Which combats mental ascent. If they're renewed to the Word, you receiving that Word with meekness to save with the Savior's soul. And what was the origin of mental ascent? Uh, it originated with familiarity of the Word, losing sight of the sacredness and holiness of the Word. The authority of the word. The difference between mental ascent and faith is faith is action upon the word, believing it fearlessly and acting upon it. Mental ascent agrees to the fact the Bible is true, but void of action. How does it rob us of our inheritance? It can rob us of healing and cause us to live barren and fruitless spiritual lives. Seeking power with God while never li learning to live by the word, thus fail living in weakness, failure, and want. All right. So the, myth, the, the, the word of God, God's revelation to us, next week, oh boy, we're going to move into the present day ministry of Jesus Christ. What is, how is Jesus ministering today? Amen. And he does. He has a, he has a present day ministry ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, did did y'all lose the feed at one point in time tonight? You did? Okay. Because my phone's just like, this, this, this service is over. I'm like, it ain't over. I'm still preaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Let's receive our Wednesday night offering. If you're not offering, I'll let our seat backs in front of you. And here's what we're going to do. On Wednesdays, make it real simple. Both Bo Joe's going to put the offering tray right back here on the back row. When you get up and leave, you just put it in there. Or if you're doing with electronic, you can send it that way. Okay? Um, you can just so grab an envelope if you want to, fill it out, and put it in that back there. It'll be right back there, and he'll pick it up from there. He'll be guarding it, too. <laughs> Brother Joe takes being the keeper of the house of God seriously. <laughs> Don't you, Brother Joe? Take them down. Yeah, take them down. <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the tithe and offering. We thank you for the people who are blessed according to the word of God. We receive blessings in their lives, uh, manif manifest and manifold more than they can ask or think. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise God. Don't forget to be with us on Sunday. <clears throat> there will not be a church work day this Saturday. Okay? We had, a, we had one that I thought was going to be three hours last week. ended up being the eight. Um, it's like, but we got a lot done. We really did get a lot done. Got these rooms cleaned out. We got them set up now. We can put stuff in here and use it for offices. It's really nice that we can do that. Um, kitchen's got to be straightened back up. Some more stuff's got to go back over to the storage unit. You know, um, sometimes between now and the summer, hopefully we'll get a building built back here and get all of our stuff on site. Um, but, you know, you can only do so much at one time. Doors are ordered. Lights are ordered. That's, that's our next two biggies. New mattresses for the children, the nursery, for the crib are ordered. They're going to get replaced. Um... Janie got new steel chairs for the kids to sit on instead of the, these. They squirm better on that slick metal. <laughs> kids like to squirm. They can just get around better on it. All right? <coughs> Praise God. Amen. All right. So don't forget about this. I'm sorry. <coughs> I, was, I was in the, the uh, riding, indoor riding um, uh, rink for the horses out of camp. We were this morning. It was damp and cold. I was wrapped down. It took me to the last block to get warmed back up because I got back to my, my, my room and they had the air conditioner on, blowing on my head. And I'm already cold. I had my heater on my desk, my arms right around it typing, and the heat just blowing right here because it was so cold. Huh? Yeah. I'd be, I would be glad to ship my air conditioner over to you. Are you? Okay. It, I mean, it was cold. And, of course, Janie got in Janie's room and it's burning up. Yeah. Our building, our part of the building, air conditioner works too good. Hallelujah. But don't forget to be with us on Sunday. Hallelujah. As we continue um, ministering the Word of God. We finished um, um, Redeemed from Spiritual Death, Poverty, and Sickness. So we'll be moving on to something else on Sunday. Glory to God. But be here. Have, hallelujah. Invite some people. Go get some folks and, and bring them to church. Get them to come. 
Tell them how, how good things are. And th what they're going to find out here is how to live a new life in Christ. Live a victorious life in Christ. Live an overcoming life in Christ. Amen? Be healed, prosper, and, and made disciples go out and win people to Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people as they go their way. Open up your windows and bless them in every arena of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Till next time, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. See you next time here in person and online at Expedition Church of the Triad. Good night, everybody. See you next time.